All right, I'm going to make sure that it continues to count up. I must have hit pause twice. I don't know how I even fucking did that, but I did. All right, you want me to start recording again? Yeah, go ahead. And I am recording again. Okay, here we go again. Now that we got it out of our system. The following show will destroy your self-worth with excessive expletives, overtly descriptive sexual deviance, and more desperation for external validation than any so-called entertainment should ever be allowed. Two talentless losers who are about as insightful and provocative as a comatose jellyfish. Cinema Psyops. A tendency to deprave and corrupt those whose minds are open to such immoral influences and to whose hands a publication of this sort may fall. So if someone of a dirty bird gets hold of your stuff and it makes them a dirtier bird, then it's labeled obscene. Encouraging the lowest, most base, and animalistic of desires to all who will listen. Because we, as a society, have decided that the cinema psyops represents our base and vulgar impulses, and that acknowledging our use of it rattles our collective conscience. I was trying my best to make a positive impact in the lives of others, but secretly I was involved in a relationship that was taking over my life. Cinema Psyops. It was leaving me wounded and depressed, unable to even manage the relationships that mattered to me. Auditory vermin infesting every aspect of the human condition, spreading their filth and foul disease. The Black Plague Podcast. Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. Welcome to the 246th straight week of Cinema PsyOps. I am Court. I am the one responsible for this show and then also for choosing May Mate. Very taciturn about that very situation is Matt. I feel like I've said this before, but this was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am not having a very good day, nor are you technology wise. No. Um, <laughs> no, we're all fucking up around here. Yeah, so I don't know how you keep doing this, but you somehow loaded your unedited clips. I, I loaded the unedited clips, yeah. Because <laughs> I did the clips late at night. And you were sleepy and you didn't know what the and, fuck and, was going on. And I and I was like, okay. And what helped, hurt me most is I was starting to load the clips and I had to take, you know when you have to take a piss, but you want to get done with what you're doing? Yeah, that's like 97% of my life. Yeah, so I really had to take a piss too. So I was like, oh, okay, clips are done. And then I highlighted and load them and didn't realize I was lo loading all the old ones when I ran upstairs to go take a leak and then go to sleep. Yeah, but on the plus side, you at least got the recording to work. So did you replace the cord or? Yeah, I replaced the aux cord. Cord. Yeah, it was the ox cord. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the old fat uh, ox cord causing the fuck up. So yeah, those eighth inch cords, the eighth inch to eighth inch, like computer audio or headphone like type audio jacks, are not good. I try to avoid using them as much as I possibly can. Yeah, yeah, they weren't. It's not. They fail so easily. Well, yeah, it's very thin wires. It's a very small jack. The post isn't that great. They never really shield them well, and they also don't ever really give them enough of that rubber stuff whenever they cast it to protect it and keep it from breaking either. I mean, we talk more about audio equipment for the next hour, and I talk about this movie. No, no, we definitely have to talk about Mamete. I mean, motherfuck, <laughs> dude! It's the very first week of Mamete. We only have yeah. four movies. We have four more weeks of this to go, Matt, and then. We're on to Andy Sedaris films, and you'll be happy again. Do you think like this is the worst one yet? <laughs> I mean, we've already done what I would have considered to be the absolute worst, where it was like the shot on video, direct to video, like the jail, the women's hell, the cannibal apocalypse one, or whatever it was, where they were like it was an aliens ripoff with cannibals that somehow aliens made cannibals or something. Yeah, no, this is still worse. This was <laughs> definitely. This is the worst uh, uh, Mate so far. I, it, it, uh, we were I, talking at one point about just doing all the all the Mate entire library, uh -huh. and that scares me. But at the same time, it'd be so good for the fucking show. <laughs> 
Well, that's the point. Like, how bad is it going to get? Like, how much of a hack could he possibly be? I, I think I think the answer is infinite. <laughs> I mean, I love Aliens, Matt, but I don't want to watch the same ripoff of Aliens packaged in a different way with new actors every time for, like, the rest of my showmaking career. Like, with horrible, with way more horrible-looking Aliens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I at least want someone else to take a stab at it, because, like, when Roger Corman's factory did some Alien knockoffs, at least those were, like, halfway okay. Yeah. And, uh, the Galaxy of Terror one, whichever the one with uh, Freddy Krueger in it and Sid Haig, and then they both die. That one wasn't that great. No, yeah, that one was not good. But the the one, no, no, that one, that one was actually the good one. It was the other one that wasn't good. It was the guy that uh, the the biogenetic engineered alien knockoff that looked like an oversized like Funko Pop alien. That one oh, was yeah, Planet yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Was that's it, the one that yeah was, was it, uh, horrifically horrible. Yeah, it was like not Planet of, I can't even fucking remember. But they were like basically shot back to back, and the one got all the money to to flesh out its plot, and it also had James Cameron working on it, who went on to do Aliens, which was fucking amazing. And then Matei saw it and went, "That's what I'm gonna." do for the rest of my career oh you want to make sci-fi movies no no this movie i make this movie over and over again for the rest of my career all the fucking time (laughs) he's like this script is not good you need to punch this up we need a ripley and we need a newt and we need a cat and they're like you just want to make aliens yes i'm going to make aliens for the rest of my life that's what i'm going to do i make aliens that's all they want to do god Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just wonder how many more of these. Like, I, I got three more weeks of Mate. I know at least one of them is a women's prison movie with Laura Jemsner, so there's that to look forward to. Yeah, well, I mean, at least we have that. Yeah. But I'm sure he'll find a way to ruin that, even. Well, I think that was shot before Aliens, so maybe that will have something a little bit more. But that one's, I think it's Violence in a Women's Prison, which was shot at the same time as the Women's Prison Massacre, or whatever that we already covered. But it's the same one that's like, it's the same set with Laura Jemsner and the same cast that we did where, you know, (laughs) she went to a women's prison undercover as a reporter, as a manual or whatever. Yeah. So it's the same one, basically, but it's just a different, it's a new movie, but it's shot on the same sets with the same cast. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I can't wait for that. <laughs> this is fucking horrendous. <laughs> you were really, really taciturn, and luckily that didn't actually get recorded. Um, that's been lost to the ether, but you were very upset when we first started this. You were really, really angry. I was. Yeah, we, we lost it, but uh, I've calmed down a little bit because, you know, I exploded. But th- there's a lot of anger left in these notes, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you took five clips, and they're all very, very short, mostly because it's there's no dialogue. You had nothing that was usable. There, I mean, that, yeah, this is an hour and 30 minute long movie, pretty much. Yeah. Hour a, and 27. Like 29 or something like that, but yeah, yeah, it's real close to an hour and 30. And those five clips were, yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah, there was five instances of actual dialogue in the movie, and you clipped all of them. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, usable dialogue. There was other dialogue that was just so fucking useless you wouldn't clip it. (laughs) No sane person would, but I would because I wouldn't want to actually write down anything going on in the show (laughs) for this one. (laughs) Like, fuck it. I'm just kidding. The whole movie's the clip. Shocking Dark is so awful. I feel like it's a special needs child and I can't make fun of it. Like, I feel bad for it. I'm like, oh, come on, buddy. Don't, no, stop peeing on the floor. You know better than that. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. That that, that movie needs to learn. (laughs) It didn't do anything wrong. It's not the movie's fault. Well, then we got to do something to whoever created it. (laughs) <laughs> something to whoever created it yes i don't even know if Matei's around anymore and if he is he's probably gonna listen to this and hate us and fuck him he's the one who made this hacky ass shit fuck why should he hate us fuck him he knows what he fucking did he want to hear that shit he put james cameron's heart and soul into this movie matt <laughs> yeah uh, that pisses me off don't make hacky shit they get pissed when someone points out how much of a fucking hack you are how fucking dare you? I feel personally attacked here. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not a hack. No, as no. far as podcasting goes, I'm definitely not a hack. I work way harder than most podcasters. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's only one hack that we're talking about here. That's fucking Bate. He's a fucking hack. <laughs> and on that note we're going to play the legion go fund me promo we'll have a little bit of music that has absolutely nothing to do with this fucking movie because i couldn't even be bothered to give a shit about it why 
And when we come back, there will be no trailer because apparently they couldn't even be fucking bothered to give a trailer that was usable for this format. This is Bo from LegionPodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale, take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. Let's get moving on here. That's something like a late 80s, early 90s professional wrestler's entrance, generic entrance music. Well, it's uh, it's a synthwave thing that was royalty free that I got my hands on, or at least they claimed it was royalty free where I got my hands on it. So don't at me, bro. Don't, don't at me to be fucking cool. Yeah, so I've been getting into the retro synth wave, so I decided that it was fitting for... This sounds like the kind of thing that would have ended up in the movie, you know, if a distributor would have picked it up and thrown some money in it. I agree. (laughs) Let's just fucking get it over with. We're we're delaying it. (laughs) Yeah, Jesus Christ. All right, the shocky dark. A.K.A. Terminator 2, a.k.a. Aliens meets Terminator. Should be called the shocking ripoff of two movies. There's nothing Uh, shocking about it if you know Matei. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm I'm talking about if someone doesn't know him. So uh, we open with a video of Venice, and it's in trouble. And it's also our first clip. Venice before the year 2000. Squares, museums, and churches. Tourists crowd the streets. Venice is threatened by the high tide. The seaweed is killing the oxygen in the waters, and the putrid waters are corroding the foundations of the city. This is Venice today. What will happen tomorrow? The situation in Venice is now critical. A giant toxic cloud has settled over the city and is slowly destroying every form of life. The government has declared it a disaster area and has ordered the evacuation of the few remaining survivors. 
Venice is now a dead city. So, and since Venice is just a fucking hellhole, uh, some guys uh, come running. They're on the streets of Venice, and they're running, and it seems that uh, something's chasing them, and they're screaming for others to help them. Then one guy actually kills one of the other guys who's with him, and then we see this creature like coming up kind of behind him. Um, they're all trying to get a hold of the command center. Uh, then, uh, after all this happens... A video diary is played, and that is our next clip. Henry Raffleson, this may be the last time I'll ever be able to make contact with you. One thing's for sure, our group here seems to be condemned to certain death, a hideous death. So what I want to establish now is exactly how all this began. The studies that have led us to this conclusion began about a week ago when these strange phenomena began. Maxwell and Jordan are already dead. Drake is showing increasing signs of mental disorder, a clear case of schizoid disassociation. He continually talks about strange creatures. Even in his calmer moments, he insists he's in touch with them. It's, it's almost as if he were... Well, that's it. It's certainly not much to go by. And just why have all the video cameras in the city and in the tunnels gone haywire? We don't know, but it's going to be part of your job to find out. And bring back any survivors, of course. Let's not forget about Raffleson's diary. That's what interests us the most. And just who are you? Samuel Fuller from the Tubular Corporation. I'll be coming with you. Hey, wait a minute, Colonel. It's only right that the lady here comes along. She's a scientist. But I don't want any other civilians on this mission. We don't know what we might run into out there. I need highly trained men who know what to do in an emergency, not company representatives. Eleven years in the Marines were enough to teach me that whoever talks a lot doesn't get much done. And you seem to talk a lot. Easy, Bond. Fuller here's an expert in the martial arts. He served in an 11-day war at Ankara. Besides, it's a tubular corporation that wanted this mission done in the first place. I'll say. Our company invested millions of dollars constructing the underground viaduct that links us with Venice. The project was supposed to purify the city's polluted waters. As things stand, it appears that all of your millions have only gone to worsen the situation. That remains to be seen. Well, you've got 15 minutes to get ready to begin Operation Delta Venice. I mean, that guy couldn't choke through those lines. <laughs> he, uh, master... <laughs> Martial arts. Yeah. Bad. The uh, actors in this are really stunted in dialogue, and I thought that they were dubbed, but if they were dubbed, it matches the lips a little too well. I feel like they shot this in America, or at least with American actors, and it is just, they're that bad of <laughs> actors and actresses. I don't know where they found these folks, uh, but everything about this movie just reeks of a high school production for an AV class that got a little too ambitious, you know? Like, Agreed. Like, uh, the Adam Goldberg kid who makes his own movies based on other movies and rips them off. That's, yeah. ba that's basically what we have here. Only it's a full grown Italian man named Bruno Mattei. That is yeah. At least that song. was just some kid just trying to have fun and explore and learn. Yeah. And was also like really a big fan of the movies he was aping and was actually trying to make the same movies again on whatever budget he could. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, this guy was just a, just a fucking dude who wants to steal shit. <laughs> I don't know if he just wants to steal shit, but this is really badly done. This is so badly done. I Again, I feel bad for making fun of it. Like it's, He is it, morally and creatively bankrupt. <laughs> oh, it's so awful. <laughs> uh, so then we cut to a woman soldier, and she's kind of a real dick to everybody. She's kind of yelling at every fucking soldier, smacking him in the ass. Talking shit. Yeah, her name's Vasquez, right? Vasquez. She's, I yeah. listen. I'm gonna tell you real quick. I think I I remembered one name and wrote it down. Other than that, it's all people. <laughs> uh, Matt Vasquez was the lady that was the hard ass in Aliens that was teamed up with oh, the other guy, I, and they worked those big fucking it, you know sixties on like armatures. Yeah, and she ended up with Bill Paxton at the very end. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, that's fuck. That's, she's very much Vasquez. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she's addicted to everyone but the surfer dude, because there's going to be a surfer dude. Yeah. Uh, 
the choices that he makes in this film. It's just, she, it's like a slow motion car crash as it unfolds. Yeah, then there's an Italian guy. She really hates the Italian guy. In fact, she takes a few racist jabs at uh, Italians as a whole. And then he takes a few racist shots of his own as well uh, against her ethnicity. Yeah, that was bizarre. That whole exchange. Yeah, it's fucking weird, man. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing. Like I can't. I can't explain it. I <laughs> this can't... is gonna be the weirdest fucking show because this movie was that bad. Yeah, I can't play devil's advocate for anything in this movie. Like I can't even be like, at least the costumes were awesome. Because literally, because literally, all I've got was it is a film in that it was clearly shot on film. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. So then the team enters, this whole SEAL team, whatever, enters the zone. Uh, They come in contact with gunfire, and the Italian saves the angry lady's life. Uh, The shooter is then captured, and it's found out he is one of the scientists on uh, a previous mission. Uh, He seems to go on crazy and then lets out an alien-like scream, almost like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And then he grabs the soldier and and runs away with him. Yeah, so we got more zombie-created alien types because it's cheaper to film people acting crazy than it is to film your sausage glued to the face of a bunch of foam to pretend to be an alien that they showed yeah. us. Uh-huh. As they split up to find him, two of them find the guy's name was Price, the angry lady and, uh, and some other guy. They find him in a web of sorts, almost like he's been cocooned. Oh, oh my God. Why am I watching fucking Alien? Aliens. It's aliens. Yeah, either way. I'm watching it. And that, I actually wrote that in caps uh, in the middle of taking notes. So you'll find I do that a few times. He's uh, he's wrapped in cobwebs, which is clearly just a bunch of cotton batting that was stretched out to its limit over top of everything. Like yeah. I've done many a times to decorate my house for Halloween and make fake cobwebs. <laughs> before I discovered so, the joy of beef netting, which is yeah. much better for that. But anyway, it's very clearly cotton batting that they stretched over top of it, and it's so much obviously cotton because they didn't stretch it right the way that they did it. It just doesn't look right. And nothing in this film was done right, obviously. No. Except for the cinematography. For some reason, that looks beautiful. They had a great cinematographer. They must have paid them well because... It looks really fucking good. It looks way better than it deserves to look. It might have been more enjoyable if it wasn't as easy to see everything. Uh, he uh, begs them and tells them that he wants to die. They go to try to get him out, and then an alien arm busts out, uh, trying to grab at him. Uh, at this point, everyone goes running. Uh, then Surfer Dude shoots the arm off, uh... And then another soldier uh, gets taken by an alien. And as he's being drug away, his partner shoots the alien, killing it. They all are able to regroup and they go to find the body of the alien, but it's gone. Then all of a sudden their sensor starts going off and they say they're being surrounded. Yeah, it's a sensor that beeps, but it looks an awful lot like an old school remote from like a 1980s style VCR. It looked uh true. It looked uh creepily like something you would play old football games on. Yeah, it could have been one of those old school football games where it was just like the little lights that lit up to show you where you were at for your touchdowns Exa- and everything. Exactly. I, yeah, but they tried to make it sound like it was the beep from aliens with that um rain finder thing that they used in aliens and they even hold it to where they're pointing it in a direction to try and get like a bearing or whatever but it just doesn't work it's it's clear what they're trying to do but they're falling short even on stealing yes. um, he doesn't even steal well which is the part that probably offends you the most probably i mean oh my god <laughs> it's blatant and it's awfully done yes so anyway the group hides out and that is our next clip there now we're safe what's following us more of the same thing that attacked francini Captain, this business isn't going down with me anymore. What do you mean? What I mean is this is no longer a salvage mission. Price didn't die a Marine's death, and that's for sure. Right, Kane? Yep. Shit, our lives are at stake here. Hell, I'm the first to fight when there's fighting to be done, and I'll take on anyone, but those things behind that door ain't anyone. They're goddamn monsters. What is this? Mutiny? An Arrestian! What the fuck did you think this was? A pleasure trip to Venice in a goddamn gondola? You're not Boy Scouts out on a hike. You're Marines. The Megaforce. The next one to backtalk my orders gets a bullet between the eyes. Is that clear? What are your orders, sir? We keep going. We keep going till we reach Raffleson's shelter. 
All right. Move on! Oh, God. Okay. So, uh, Command gets in touch with them, and they find out about Price and all the goings on. So, they leave the little safe space area to continue the mission. While investigating, they find and chase down a very scared young girl. She seems to have gone nuts, and oh my god, why am I watching the fucking aliens again? (laughs) Okay, so they find the little girl. The one guy actually reaches out to try and, like, touch her face and try and reassure her or some shit like that. Hashtag me too. Right. And then when he reaches towards her, she bites him right on the hand as hard as she can, and then she jumps out and kicks one of them in the shins or something and then runs off and then the uh ripley amalgamation character is like i've got this i've got this you know because she's a woman so clearly she knows how to talk to a child and that's the only I character's guess. name i know sarah yeah sarah the the ripley knockoff in this so she goes and she soothes the child a little bit the child immediately opens right up to her because of course so we've seen this all in aliens we know how this is going to go then the girl sort of directs them through these steam tunnels or whatever the fuck they are as places to hide and all that <sighs> It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Okay, anyway, they calm her down, and we find out she's a, one of the professor's daughters there. So then we find out that they are actually doing genetic testing, but they can't find anybody in the labs. Uh, more investigating, and the angry soldier lady gives a dude a picture of Venice uh, before everything got ruined. Why? We, we don't know. Well, we already know that Venice was somehow ruined. We just don't know what the cause of it was. No, but we don't know why she's giving out pictures of it either. I don't know. She doesn't need, they don't, like, they don't show her finding them. She just is. (laughs) It makes no sense. Uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, the company dude... Uh, he, uh, really likes the research that they are, these guys are doing. Then we get more cut scenes of them just walking around researching and, and no one cares. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to piece together what happened here on LV426. I mean, underneath Venice, uh, <laughs> They don't know what caused this. They don't know why there's a problem here. They just know that something is really bad. And they didn't even know that there was a genetics testing lab here, right? They just knew that there were scientists. Do we even know why they came in to raid this place? Uh, that Yeah, because there was yeah, a group of scientists there. So they want to get the research, the tubular. By the way, tubular. Tubular corporation. Yeah, I get it. Oh, tubular, dude. Fuck it. I mean, come on. Well, they can't come right out and say Wayland yutani so <laughs> they just picked a word that they thought would work and fails miserably of course of course <laughs> oh fuck uh yeah okay we got some more looking around uh but a we see a creature is stalking the angry lady uh her and kowalski they uh look to go back to get into the safe room uh but then she is attacked kowalski is thrown over the side and killed and she is dragged off then the little girl wakes up screaming, and company fan finds something very interesting in our next clip. It's incredible. Ingenious. What bastards. They've done it. They've done it. What is it, Fuller? It's practically DNA. No, it's more like an enzyme that's similar to DNA, completely redesigned by a computer. A masterpiece. A masterpiece of genetic engineering. Cybernetics applied to molecular biology. What have you found, Fuller? Nothing like this has ever existed before. It's not alive, that is. It's not alive until it finds something to live in. Something to reprogram on the basis of its own genetic program. A chromosome data bank. It's like a floppy disk. You insert it into the right computer and it literally brings its program to life. What computer? Us. Us, we're the computer. You mean this, whatever it is, can reprogram any form of life and transfer it into something completely different? Exactly. It's incredible, but someone in this laboratory invented something new. An agent that can't be transmitted. On contact with the oxygen in the air, even in minute quantities, it's capable of modifying any genetic code, of transforming the cells into... Into that thing that killed Price in the tunnels. Are you saying that it only has to be inhaled to be assimilated? I think so. That means that we might even be breathing it right now. Hey, guys. I don't get it. You mean we're going to turn into something weird? (laughs) Daddy said it was all the fault of the tubular corporation. Hey, leave her alone. Can't you see she knows how to use it? This is it. 
This is the answer we've been looking for. We can't get to the bottom of this here. We have to get to the tubular plant. They've cut the lights. What do you mean, they've cut the lights? It's them! Let's get out of here! We're too vulnerable here. Let's go. Franzini, Kane, you go ahead. Right. So the thing that they've been genetically experimenting on is some kind of like a spore or something that you can inhale. And the cotton batting stretched out webbing locks you in with the spores that they're releasing to turn you into this creature because it's a floppy disk that gets inserted into your computer and tells you what to do. Yes. <laughs> I guess. So that's, that explains some of the like psycho zombie type people that are running around attacking people. And then there is like you know, these monster creatures that are apparently they used to be us and then we've transformed into them? Is is that what they're trying to explain in that yeah, clip? Yeah, sure. W why not? I mean, it, it makes as <laughs> much right, sense so, as anything else going on so uh, far. All right, all right. so it's not me being just completely bored and not paying enough attention. They just don't explain it, right? That That's what was going they, on. Like, they just, they give you half-hearted explanations. They're like, you've seen aliens, you know what's going on. Never mind. Pretty much. That's exactly <laughs> what's happening right now. The initial idea is actually a pretty good one where it's, uh, you know, like, Venice gets destroyed and and then they have to go in. That's kind of cool, but like, then he just turns it into fucking aliens again, and that's not cool exactly. at all. Exactly. Well, anyway, then the command center is cut off from everyone, and the group tries to call the other two soldiers, but no one, of course, answers. Uh, as they go around, they talk about how tough the angry lady is, and she'll be all right. And then we see her trapped in a cocoon. So, yeah, that didn't work out so well no. for them. Uh, they then walk into a trap and are surrounded by the creatures. One throws Surfer Dude over a railing and he dies. Uh, they uh, Then they start blasting him with their futuristic fucking shotguns. And uh, they're not that futuristic. They're just tactical shotguns of the era. Until they finally are able to get the door open. And Company Man gets hurt on his arm. Um, the little girl says she knows the way out. They call command, are able to get a hold of them, and give them an update. Uh, the company man doesn't want to go to the control room where everyone's heading. He says they should just leave, but they start heading out to the control room anyway and threaten to kill him. I believe his name is Ash, company man. Whatever. It's company man to me. Um, <laughs> he's, the, he's basically acting like the android in Alien that was being all suspicious and making really bad decisions that he shouldn't be making. Yeah, I'm soon like, just going like to call breaking quarantine. T, uh, T-800. Spoiler alert. So... <laughs> yeah, he'll be that soon, too. Uh, so, anyway, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> no spoiler alert. They called this shit Terminator 2, and he's on the fucking cover. That's that's true. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, we find that his arm is a robot arm, uh, and we see that as the audience, and then the little girl sees it as well. He's not really a robot arm. It's just a few wires sticking out of a bad prosthetic that looks like a broken Easter egg. Okay, but it's, I'm telling you what it's supposed to be. Oh, right. I'm telling you what it actually was. Yeah, yeah. you're telling me what it is. I'm telling you what it's supposed to be. <laughs> right. He, he, wires are sticking out there for robots. Yes. They stop because the captain is hurt pretty bad from that last attack. Um, the scientist woman and the crazy girl, they start bonding a little bit. They fall asleep, and when they wake up, they are attacked by the alien creature things. They are screaming at the door camera, but Cuppy Man turns off the viewer. Uh... They pull an alarm, and the soldiers show up and kill the creatures. Uh, uh, then we get some more walking after that, more walking to the control center. While we're talking about them walking, I do want to point out the uh, aliens look like, uh, what, garbage bags stretched over top of regular foam and then smothered with some kind of weird pasty, greasy stuff. And when their mouths open, it's like a melted marshmallow. Yeah, there's it's a lot kind of like that. Um, the aliens are pretty terrible in this, but the one thing that is really cool is when they get shot, sparks fly out everywhere like they used at least some type of pyrotechnic thing for when the aliens get shot which adds a little bit of like ooh, kind of cool the first through two or three times that you see it but then they keep doing it and then after that it loses its luster although the one alien getting shot in the head right at this scene that you were just talking about where they come in and rescue them that was kind of yeah. cool well they find the control room and that is our final clip everything started here i'm sure of it The only thing that started here was a plan to recuperate the Venice Lagoon. Stop it. Everybody knows that the Tubular Corporation is nothing more than a big cover-up. Your largest shareholders are arms dealers and speculators like Levine and Benson, warmongers developing chemical and bacteriological weapons. 
you haven't the proof to back that up. The Tubular Corporation was given a contract to reclaim Venice. If we didn't succeed, it was because something abnormal prevented us from doing so. The same abnormal phenomena that we're investigating right now. Stockholders, welcome to the Operations Center, heart of the Tubular Corporation. The Save Venice project is about to be launched from this very room. By tomorrow, the underground aqueduct that connects us with the Lagoon City will be fully operational. Thanks to the kind intercession of two of our major shareholders, Mr. Levine and Mr. Benson, 75 milligrams of NOR and 80 milligrams of KSC will be infused into the purifying filters spanning the tubes. These substances will further pollute the water, already devoid of oxygen, and will definitely make Venice a dead city. The Turbula Corporation is the largest owner of the city's real estate, works of art, and museums. Within precisely 750 solar days, we will thus be able to proceed with the true reclamation plan and resell our property together with that acquired after the total collapse of the city for more than 70% of their present value. Now, this financial strategy has already been approved by the majority, but we are looking for total adhesion from the rest of our shareholders. We hope we can count on your cooperation today and of course, naturally, we request the maximum discretion regarding this operation. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You bastards! You were the ones who poisoned Venice! Let's keep it. Stop! The aqueduct was opened over 10 years ago. Given the way things have gone, the Tubular Corporation should have gone bankrupt. The Tubular Corporation isn't at all bankrupt. This was just one of the many projects. We have the best scientists working for us, and they'll continue to construct increasingly perfect weapons. True war machines. He's a machine too. You're a replicant. <laughs> Hold it right there, Fuller. And just what do you think you're gonna do to me with that? You still haven't realized that I'm immortal. I'm the most perfect thing ever constructed by the Tubular Corporation. And now it's your turn. Why didn't you kill us before? Because I was waiting for exactly the right time. That is to say, now. In just a little while, this whole place will be blown sky high and so long aqueduct. Of course, the Tubular Corporation will come away from this whole business unscathed as usual. If you blow the aqueduct, the mutation will be assimilated into the entire ecosystem on a planetary level. The whole world will be polluted. That's not my problem. Emergency alert. Emergency alert. All personnel will vacate position at once. You have 30 minutes to reach the security perimeter. Did you hear that? You have 30 minutes. Why don't you try to escape? During this whole uh, momentum, he attacks and kills the Italian. Also telling everyone he's immortal every five seconds, constantly, nonstop. Yes, constantly, nonstop. Yes, pretty much. Uh, every time he gets hit, he says he's immortal and it won't work. Every he's time immortal he's and dead. also top of the line, top everything. He is all, he's just the best thing ever. Yeah, Tubular Corporation has made the ultimate douchebag. Yeah, yeah. he's just the bee's fucking knees, apparently. Of douchebaggery. Of douchebags. Uh, he's the Fred Durst of Tubular Corporation cyborgs. He's the Kid Rock of cyborgs. No, no, he's actually functional. That's why he's a Fred Durst. Oh, <laughs> oh man. The girls run as the Terminator. I mean, uh, Robot Man gives chase. Don't want to get sued. <laughs> Quiet, boy. Do you want to get sued? <laughs> Command is calling, but they can't get a hold of anybody, and the captain cannot make it to the uh, intercom system to call him because he's too injured. Uh, so command decides they're going to get ready, and they're going to send in more troops. The uh, Terminator... Quiet, boy. Do you want to get sued? ...blocks the girls, and S- Sarah shoots some electrical cords above him, and that kind of fries him out. Her name's Sarah Connor. This is her new mission, Matt. Yep. Sarah Connor. Yes. Uh, the uh, girl, the little girl falls down a, a conveniently placed slide. 
Then the troops come in, and uh, the f- captain is finally able to get a hold of command and informs them of the self-destruct that's been enabled. Uh, Sarah is still looking for the girl, and uh, the creature actually finds the girl and starts kind of blocking her around, chasing her. And then the Terminator finds Sarah. Quiet, boy, do you want to get sued? And starts choking her out, and she is able to uh, kind of like steam him. Like she grabs a thing and points steam at his face and then shoots fire suppressant all over him. So Yeah, he's immortal and yet this incapacitates him. So he's immortal, he's just a pansy. I I, I straight up shotgun blast. <laughs> nope. Uh thought of everything. Fire suppressant? Fuck. I knew there was one thing. One fucking thing. Who was on fire suppressant duty? Who's supposed to figure that out? Yeah, I guess they weren't expecting him to get sprayed in a comical fashion and be able to defend. It's probably, it's probably fucking Karen. Fucking Karen. It's always a Karen. It's always a fucking Karen. So yeah, he falls over a ledge after the fire suppressant incident. They only have five minutes to stop the self-destruct. Sarah is back now looking for the kid. Then the creatures spring an attack on the command team that came in. Sarah finds the girl, and she's in a cocoon, and she helps get her out. Uh, but the queen alien is there. So, uh, But the captain is able to show up, and she he shoots it, but then it kills him as well uh now there's only 30 seconds to end the self-destruct sequence sarah calls for the rest of the team but we see the rest of the team is fucking dead from the command center sarah and the girl they find a door out with less than a minute before uh the whole thing goes kablooey but uh they get into this room but it's only a room it's not like a way out so they think they're going to die then all of a sudden a video pops up of that same lady from before telling them just to buckle up for a trip to the past they're apparently in a time machine pod fucking thing <laughs> uh anyways the time machine takes off the facility explodes uh we are now in the quote-unquote past and it's uh where it's venice now as it is uh a nice and both Sarah and the girl are found on the ground by some kids who are playing. And one of the kids' race cars, like a little remote control's car, just gets smushed. Terminator is there. Quiet, boy. Do you want to get sued? Apparently, there was a second time pod, and he took it. We uh, know this because he fucking tells us. It. Yes, exactly. He narrates what he's doing. She's <laughs> able to take some broken glass, glass and cuts his face. And they run, and he gives chase, of course. Uh, he throws a guy off the bridge while chasing him. He corners them, and she throws her data pad at him, and she must have sold it to self-destruct because it fries the Terminator killing him. That's right. The big bad, he was stopped by a fucking data pad. Okay, first of all. So hold on. That's like if you faced off with the fucking Borg in Star Trek, and you killed him with a tricorder. Okay, no, it's not just a tricorder, and it's not just a data pad. Let's back it up, right? All right. She cuts his face. She slashes his face with a broken bottle. As he's giving chase, he takes tears off the rest of the skin himself yes. revealing his sort of robotic terminator face underneath which is just a bunch of wires glued to a bad latex appliance that is then put on his face with other latex put over top of it and the wide angles it looks fine but on that close up where he tears it off it looks terrible the data pad thing you're talking about was actually part of the time machine that's like a circuit because it just jumps them back and now she has the ability to be able to go back and forth in time so she sets it to go back to where they were and tosses it at him cuz he didn't bring a data pad or whatever the fucking thing was, that time circuit thing. He just jumped back. So she sends him back to where he came from, and then that's how they escape. Jesus. Oh, see, I thought it was fucking that same thing she was holding that told them how many people were around and all that shit. It technically is the same thing. I they fucking just called it something. It. They just call it something different. So I can see where you got confused, but they she lost that earlier. Yes. And she picked that up in the time pod, and that was supposed to be like some kind of time circuit thing. Fuck it. The over the voiceover narration tells her to grab that and then sit down and buckle up, which they, they don't buckle up, but she grabs this thing that looked exactly like the data pad, but isn't supposed to be. It's supposed to be some kind of time circuit thing. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't give a fuck. Um <laughs> No, I get it. I get it. In my defense, by this point. I stopped giving a shit. Um, I'm surprised. <laughs> you though. took I, notes. You know what? I'm going to tell you one thing. Good on you. You did give a shit and you knew. I'm proud of you. Well, I was paying attention because I'm like, please let this be over. I thought this was over like when she jumped back in time. Yeah, and it wasn't. So anyway, Sarah and the girl look over Venice. They talk about having a lot to work to do. Roll fucking credits. 
Yeah, so the whole idea is now her and the little girl are going to try and undo everything that happened to Venice because they're there before it took place and she's going to have to take on the Tubular Corporation. But uh, since we know how time paradoxes work, she's not going to be able to undo shit. All she's going to end up doing is doing the work in the past and then failing miserably and then having to do it again in the future. And that bitch is stuck in a time loop. Uh, and number one, we already know none of this works because Trump became president. So whatever they did, they made it worse. The Tubular Corporation heavily invested in the Trump campaign. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The reason we have the Trump is because of the Tubular Corporation. They made him in a lab. <laughs> no, we've seen what Trump's mom looks like. Exactly like him. Well, they made them too. <laughs> All see, right, yeah. see, see, no, here's the thing. They still made Trump. While they took DNA from his father and mother, they put that in a machine with orange dye number five and then made Trump. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh brother yeah this is uh this is fucking terrible yeah um although it did really make me want to watch aliens again there were some parts of it i have to admit that were so bad i was laughing at it and actually kind of having fun and then i felt guilty for laughing at it because i felt like it had special needs and maybe i was being cruel and then i realized no it's just a shitty fucking movie and then i was able to laugh at it yeah again. oh it's so fucking bad way bad like it seems like every avenue that he had to make a choice to do something original or kind of fun or even a little bit more hip with this, he made the left turn instead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He decided to take the purple pill over and over and over again. Not the blue <laughs> pill, not the red pill. He took them fucking both. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I feel like we're going to have at least one more Aliens knockoff in the movies that we have coming up for Mamete. And I know for sure one's a woman, women's in prison, women in prison film that was made before Aliens. So I know we'll have at least one that's not, but I feel like we're going to have at least one more that will be in the other two films that are left. I feel like you're fucking probably right. Yeah, I mean, this it's, we had, what, three? Three Aliens ripoffs in some way, shape, or form in the last May Mate out of all the four movies that we did, and the only one that wasn't was the Women in Prison movie, but everything else was pretty much, it had Aliens knockoffs built into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's just fucking weird. It's so fucking <laughs> bad. It's what he wants to do for the rest of his life, man. He's gonna make Aliens. Oh, he just saw that movie, it was like, this is it. This is what filmmaking is. <laughs> <laughs> apparently now i kind of put it out there and matt kind of put it out there and i think i, I think i'm gonna go for it um yeah uh i think we're gonna have to have the audience fund any mate films in the future after this <laughs> i don't know this may or may not have broken me we, we'll see if i have enough fun that's what happened last time i was broken and then i had so much fun in the last movie that we covered i decided i wanted to do it again. yeah well great <laughs> 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 yeah, if somebody else starts I'm, buying the movies that I don't already own, we'll cover those, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'm so fucking conflicted because it's like, yeah, I fucking hate this. It's like fucking torture. But fuck does it make for a good show. <laughs> well, and it, I, I'd imagine that there's this is this is a movie ripe for riffing. This is the kind of thing that you would throw on with your friends and just have a good old time party and, and ripping into it and just making fun of every last moment of it. I can, I can imagine that this is the sort of thing that a pothead would just love to just fucking laugh at over and over again. Oh, yeah. Because of how fucking corny it is. Everything, uh, like every single detail about this film was a wrong choice. Well, if I wasn't Everything. having to do fucking notes, I'd have found this fucking hilarious. Well, I didn't have to do notes, and I was still like, this is fucking awful. I think I even posted it online. I'm like, this is fucking terrible. Yeah. Matt is going to hate this. <laughs> I did. And yeah, I saw that. I was like, yeah, that was fucking way bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mabete is off to a very rocky start. We have just hit an hour. That's with all of the complaining and fucking around. So we're going to have to pad this out a little bit with some news. Man. Oh, God. I don't even know if I have that much news. <laughs> <laughs> There's some stuff in the group. We'll find something. We'll find something. All right. We're going to take a little break here. We're going to play the Gangs of Hollywood podcast promo. We'll have a little bit more music that is retro synth wave and has nothing to do with this fucking movie. And when we come back, we'll have some PSYOP news. <laughs> As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOHpod at www.gohpod.com 
as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. I think that's about enough of that synthwave music we got going on there. <sighs> Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Solid. Yeah, it's a startling contrast to the film that we reviewed this week and probably next week and the week after that and up until we hit the Andy Sedaris movies anyway. Fucking A. All right, let's cut all this horse shit short and give me some Sionners. <laughs> Our story from Pete Quint. That is our boy Pete from the Good Beer, Bad Movie Night well, podcast. Right. Well, I could have used some good beer for this bad movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got a bad movie for you, Pete. The good beer is all yeah. on you. Uh, the drive through Strip Club in Oregon offers free TP and food delivery. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm in. right. If there's going to You've be got- a strip club open amidst a global pandemic, of course it's going to happen in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Lucky Devil Lounge started with their new food delivery service with dancers bringing food to your door. We actually did that story. While the service was firmly known as <laughs> And we tried Uber to Eats. hire them too, but we couldn't get them. Yeah, yet. right. We're trying to make that happen around here. Uh, Boober Eats. Yeah, Boober Eats. It has since been renamed to Lucky Devil Eats, as apparently Uber sent them a cease and desist letter, according to the Oregonian. Come on. Dick move. Dick. This is like Traces of Death fucked a porno. Yeah, that's a dick move, Uber Eats. Just fucking. America is a bunch of cuts. Let them live. All right, and now the Lucky Devil Lounge got extra creative with their drive through strip club. Customers arriving to their vehicles will be greeted by four dancers in short shorts and pasties. Performing. That's my fetish. Performing under the cover of an outdoor tent in the club's, in the club's parking lot. While, I have a ragey direction. While waiting for their food. Dude finally gets hard, so now it's time to plow. If you're thinking about checking it out, the cost to use the drive through is $30 per car, plus $10 for each additional vehicle occupant. Ordering is that cock and shit, it's like metal. Ordering food is also required. The go-go drive through is open from 6 to 10 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays and holidays like the upcoming Cinco de Mayo. Oh, hey, bro, I can't get it. One more perk. Free rolls of toilet paper are being given out to the first 50 or 60 vehicles. So look at Shut that. Shut up. Are you talking about penises? We're, we're, everyone's just trying to find a way, you know? Is, is toilet paper still that rare? I buy in bulk, and I bought, like, a whole bunch of shit tickets, so I'm not looking yet, but I may be soon. So is it really that bad out there still for toilet it's, paper? It depends. It got bad for a while. There was, like, like I had done a pretty good job. I didn't, like, buy in bulk or anything. I must have gotten lucky because I only shop a week out. So uh, that's what I've been doing. I shop about a week out. Uh, once a week, I go to the store only once, and then I shop out. Uh, and like first two times, like the first two times I was able to have enough toilet paper and we had enough cause we bought in bulk once as well that I didn't have to worry about it. But there were a few weeks where I was shopping. I wasn't needing toilet paper, but I was going through and there was none like for a solid month. 
And then this last trip, I just went out and they were stocked with not all brands of toilet paper, but they had toilet paper at the grocery store again. So I guess it maybe all depends on when you get there. There was also just some dude hanging out in the toilet paper aisle looking at you going, you want to do a little ass play? <laughs> uh, and you know, what might be helping is now the panic buying's probably over, I would, I would think. Um, yeah, and maybe some of the people are taking like the 55 packs that they bought back for money returned because they're like, I don't need all this. I would deny them. I'd be like, fuck you. No, I'm not re- I'm not allowing you to return that. Have fun with your <laughs> panic buys, you fucking scared piece of shit. Way to be a fucking coward and not think about your fellow man when the fucking world's about to end, you piece of shit. Go get hit Matt, by a fucking car. But Matt, toilet paper. No, they, they should go get hit by a fucking car. <laughs> okay, wait. I actually have a clip of you saying something very similar to this earlier. Who in the fuck took my paper clip? Yeah. yeah, you can see, I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, you're very upset about toilet paper. I, I, well, I got toilet paper. It's fucking panic buying. Fucking stop it. And then, and then these ass fuckers, they just get all fucking like they're right when they go into a store. No toilet paper. See, we were right to buy it all. No, they're out of it because you fucking bought it all, you dumb fuck. Go out into the fucking street and light yourself on fucking fire. Drop off the soapbox and back into the store. Sorry. Uh, well, the story's done. But it seems like a nice <laughs> thing they're doing out in Oregon. Good job. Okay, so it's 30 bucks per car, 10 bucks per occupant of car, and you drive through and the ladies will dance as you are driving through, and then at the end of it, you have to get food well, from you, them? You, yeah. You have to get food, and then, yeah. So there you go. Drive through a tent, four ladies dance for you, and some booty shorts, and uh, some pasties. There you go. Portland, you keep being weird. <laughs> fucking Port- <laughs> That's all I have to say. Portland, Oregon, just a weird fucking place, but hey, whatever, man. You do you, Portland. I make money from my sex work. They do. They definitely do. They definitely do, I mean, we want to support them. I would hope that any of the sex work you're doing, you would make money from. <laughs> you would hope, but you know, you never know with some people. Your cum will probably taste better. If you make money from your sex work, Lee, I don't understand. I don't know, man. Lee, what are you talking about? I make money from my sex work. He must have an incredibly long penis. Well, that would be one way. <laughs> and then we have a second story. Yeah, let's do at least one more story to yeah. pad out the episode a little bit so we're not all just complaining about how bad everything yeah, is. Yeah, right. Uh, this are uh, come from our field man, our man out in the field, Robert Ward. Uh, police. Mustang driver said he didn't stop because he thought troopers wanted to race. Old cops are bumbling dummies. To hell with the police. I'm going to stockpile all my guns because cops don't help you. <laughs> this comes from Elkhart County, Indiana. A Minnesota oh, man Indiana. was arrested last night in Elkhart County after officials says he led Indiana State Police on a high-speed pursuit because he thought <laughs> they wanted to race. According to the press release, 25-year-old <laughs> Musab Alusan was clocked uh, by troopers going 120 miles an hour in a 70-mile-per-hour zone. The red, Must- it just to yeah, it. the red Mustang was chased for 25 miles with troopers throwing stop sticks twice before the pursuit ended. Shooting a fucking hot load all over this dog. Police say Alison told troopers he didn't stop because he thought the officers wanted to race. He was taken to Elkhart County Jail and now faces plenary charges of resisting police, reckless driving, and several moving violations. I started doing drugs after that. Pray to God, that's what assholes do. What to do a third? <laughs> I mean, we're at like an hour, and most of that is like us just bitching. So we're gonna have to do something, right? Yeah, let me do a third. We're gonna give Robert credit for this because it's the same site. Because it's just a story right below the one I just did. Man, a gorilla costume arrested after entering the wrong home. Oh this, Jesus Christ! This is in I think Mount, that's going in the spank bank. <laughs> this is about Juliet, Tennessee. Police in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, arrested a man they say was wearing a gorilla costume when he went inside the wrong home and scared a six-year-old girl. Fuck. Oh, Jesus. Bad, bad fucking luck. Police say 31-year-old Richard Music was dressed like a primate Sunday afternoon and walked in through the back door of the home. The Shut up. Are you talking about penises? The resident no, no, confronted the man in their backyard, and he ran. Music was later found by police officers. The man told police he thought he was at someone else's home and was looking for someone. Old cops are bumbling dummies. Music you can't pay a bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. Music was charged with aggravated burglary and booked in Wilson County Jail. He walked into the wrong house and got aggravated burglary. Yeah, I fucked the man. Make mistakes, man. Jesus. Okay, so I was house sitting for a friend once, okay? Uh-huh. And I used my friend's key in his neighbor's lock, opened the guy's front door and stepped right in. Really? <laughs> yeah. Were you they, like they freaked? Used, they, 
No, he was like, oh, hey. I'm like, he's like, I thought you were my wife. I'm like, I sure hope I'm not. <laughs> and I'm like, I am so sorry. I meant to go to my friend's house. I'm keeping an eye on their cat and I have no idea how this happened. And then he just went on to tell me how the locks in this particular apartment building were really, really shit and pretty much every key opened every door and it's completely unsafe, oh. which I proceeded to immediately text all of that information to my friend after I went the couple of doors down I needed to go to get into his house to feed and take a look and make sure his cat was okay. Yeah. Good lord, hopefully they have chain locks too. Fuck, that's creepy. Uh, postscript, that person no longer lives in that apartment uh, yeah. area. They they now own a home and they are far, far away from that and are perfectly safe. But uh, yeah, that apartment building is very scary. Also, don't ever buy quick set locks. Don't ever buy any lock that can accept any key just by you changing that lock because they don't work for shit. Uh, well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, good safety tip. <laughs> yeah, the more you know, folks, the more you know. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it Mamete is just gonna have to be a short fucking episode every time we hey, do you know it. what there's some podcasts that only go 45 minutes there's some podcasts that only go 20 minutes yeah back. exactly we like to and give the people over an hour at least and then there's cinema psyops where we try to at least wait until you're done with us <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that's uh that's that's my preferred sexual style i just tried to hang in there till you're done with me <laughs> And on that note, because I am done with Matt, we're going to play the Ending Legion promo. <laughs> we're going to have a little bit more music that is uh, sort of dark wavy retro synth, I guess, but still has nothing to do with Shocking Dark. And we come back, we will close out this fucking waste of a show. Oh, God. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This Is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found Dark wave music provided by the Tubular Corporation. <laughs> Fuck. No wonder I hated it.
<laughs> no, it actually wasn't quite that bad. I mean, no, you know, it could have been around. much, much worse. Just if you say it's made by the Tubular Corporation, I'm going to hate it. I hear they're personally responsible for the amount of clones that Chad Kroger has to keep Nickelback running forever. <laughs> well, if you'd like to learn more conspiracy theories about this Tubular Corporation, you can check out our main landing and launching page, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. We actually don't have anything about the Tubular Corporation in there because for some reason it keeps getting expunged from the record. Fucking they own Facebook. But for some reason they allow our Facebook group Cinema PsyOps to keep functioning. Yeah, they can't, it's still there. They can't eradicate the whole thing or else it's just too blatant. Yeah, it would be obvious that they're trying to silence our voices in making people recognize all the evil that Tubular Corporation does. Which, the best way to do that is to post your tasty, high-quality fucking memes in the Cinema PsyOps group. Only the tastiest the highest of quality of means can help fight the Tubular Corporation. I am also on Facebook as Court PsyOps, as well as Matt being on Facebook as Matt PsyOp, until the Tubular Corporation has us removed because we are troublemakers. Nah, it's okay. I don't make any... I, I might work for the Tubular Corporation before it's all said and done. You can email feedback to Matt, PsyopMatt, at the Tubular Corporation, gmail.com. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, counting there. Uh, you can also email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. I've heard that the Tubular Corporation originally owned Twitter, but you can reach us there at court underscore psyop and at psyop Matt. Apparently they sold it off and bought Instagram. All they needed to do was add water and they had a gram of Insta. I'm just telling you, you know Tubular Corporation was behind that fucking shit fest that's Twitter. <laughs> Initially, yeah, I believe so. That's probably how they got their money. Now, the Instagram is definitely the place where if you share a really high quality tasty ass fucking meme that catches my eye, I'm going to share it. Yes. There. But I will also share any meme that I have acquired through, let's just call it very nefarious means. <laughs> <laughs> I steal your memes, kids. I steal steals your memes. He's gonna take all them memes. They're all ours now. Ours! Well, just like the Tubular Corporation, kick the fuck out of the world and this week and make it your bitch. It's so bad. Where did so I go bad. here? Uh, Which is clearly just a bunch of cotton batting that was stretched out to its limit over top of everything. Like yeah. I've done many a times to decorate my house for Halloween and make fake cobwebs. <laughs> Before I discovered so, the joy of beef netting, which is yeah. much better for that. Uh, <laughs> beef I, netting. For some reason, that sounds dirty. Um, well, it's netting that you wrap beef in. It's literally what it's for. Beef netting that makes it sound like something you did in college once and I dare. It may have very well been. <laughs> it's uh, like, Court, I'll give you 20 bucks to beef net. <laughs> Shit. Now it sounds I need like twenty bucks. Now it sounds like a fucking website where you used to pirate stuff like before Napster <laughs> was even a thing. Oh yeah, I totally pulled this MP3 off of Beefnet. It's like eighteen kilobytes a second. It sounds awesome, dude. I just downloaded Enter Sandman. It only took me twenty four hours, and uh, it's on Beefnet. <laughs> Beefnet, where the cool kids got stuff before Napster. <laughs> Beefnet. <laughs> uh, no, I'm depending on that one, folks. <laughs> no, you can have it. Take beef netting. Take it. We're going to do, we're gonna no. do something with beef net. I don't know what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah beef, but. Beef net sounds like the next grinder, but it's called beef net. 
Sure, that too. Yeah, because yeah. you have to wrap it up in order to be participating in BeefNet. That's much better. <laughs> Gotta be safe. <laughs> so use BeefNet. <laughs> Gotta put a net on your beef before you can get on the beef with the net. <laughs> BeefNet.net. <laughs> net your beef with BeefNet.net. <laughs> not. not available at BeefNet.com. All of that. It better ideas than this movie. <laughs> All right, hold on. Ugh. Sorry, allergies. You're so angry I have, you're coughing. <laughs> I, I'm so angry. This movie gave me the Rona. <laughs> uh, Shocking dark. <laughs> of Price, but it's now magically gone. Or no, the, I'm sorry, the body of the alien. Not Price. The body of the alien they go try to go find, but it's gone. Then all of a sudden... I would have known the difference. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. God damn it. I'm trying, Matt. I got nothing. Stop out. trying. Just live with the fact that it's going to be bad. Lean into the suck. Lean into Let it, it be. Steer into it like with ice. <laughs> Jam on the fucking accelerator, crank the wheel to the right, and just spin out into nothingness. Exactly. Oh, my God. Uh, then we get yeah, that was Paul bra- Rudd, right? What? That was that, that was Paul Rudd, yeah, yeah. right? Paul Rudd, exactly. Only bigger, yeah. more broad shoulder, less too dadsy. Um, <laughs> less too dadsy. So anyway, I'd expect Tubular Corporation to be trying to sell me Billabong knockoff clothing. I, I would expect oh. Tubular to like be the parent company of Zubaz. <laughs> Tubular is also the parent company of oh, what is it? The Pacific Ocean uh, T-shirts or the Pacific West yes. or whatever they used to be. Zubaz pants. Pacific Zubaz pants. Ocean shirts. Pacific wear. Yeah, Pacific, Pacific wear. wear. And yeah. um, those multicolor fucking shades. The the almost like the shades that guys who are really into guns now wear. Yeah, only with multiple colors and they go yeah. like they have the, the mismatching triangles one's purple Kay. one's like green or something if you liked wearing the late 80s early 90s the tubular corp the tubular corporation was responsible for it tubular corporation yeah they have those dayglow shirts whenever heat gets on them they change to a different color of dayglow yeah to so show you that knew who the sweaty there. kids were in school <laughs> right they make those they, um, really, they, they didn't really help anybody out there they bought out billabong just to make sure that they could have all of their really interesting designs and all of that and they were going to start actually building surfboards but they found that there was more money in merchandise to be sold to people that were nowhere near the pacific ocean you know what's really funny is this uh, through all of it, the Tubular Corporation has survived, and actually now they're the parent company of anything Affliction or Ed Hardy or <laughs> anything like that. Yeah, like uh, they're the official owners of all the copyrights of Five Finger Death Punch's music. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, they they are the owners of Monster Energy Drinks. No, no, they're not an owner. They're just one of the highest investors. Yes, there you go. <laughs> If a douche loves it, it's probably for the Tubular Corporation. They figured out a way to write all of Nickelback's lyrics. <laughs> They're responsible for Rick and Morty fans. Oh, not the show, just the fans. Not the show, just the fans. <laughs> oh. All right, everybody chill out. Don't fucking peg Matt with your Szechuan sauce. <laughs> fucking settle down. I know, I know. The show's genius. I get it. <laughs> all right, let's move on. All right. <laughs> this is gonna be all outtakes in like a twenty minute review. <laughs> Fucking hey, man! You might you might as well just not even edit it, and just leave it as is for this one. <laughs> I'm severely considering it. It would be edited much better than a Matei film. Yeah. <laughs> More original too. This is so fucking frustrating, man. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I can't imagine you trying to put notes to this and like trying to piece it together and just be like, what the fuck is even going on the I, entire time? I pretty time. much gave up. Like I said, I was like, fuck names. I, I'm not going to go back and learn anyone's fucking names. I don't care. <laughs> this movie didn't care enough. So why should I try to care about it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this poor movie. <laughs> it deserved better than what it got. <laughs> Maybe. It's always a fucking Karen. Man, you're just casting a wide net. Fucking Rick and Morty fans and Karen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. Bring it, you fucking internet rage. You have to lay off the Juggalos because at least they're making wise choices. Yeah, right. Days. The Juggalos aren't even meeting this year. I'm, I'm proud of them. Fucking... Way to go. You're much smarter than politicians, Juggalos. I never thought that would happen. <laughs> Juggalos, congratulations. You're smarter than all conservatives, pretty much. I'm and pr- they'll be more alive. I'm, pr- I'm proud of you, Juggalos. Juggalos, 2020. No, God, no. (laughs) 
So the Tubular Corporation made a way for them to undo all of their mistakes, but then decided, no, we still need to fund Five Finger Death Punch and write all the lyrics for Nickelback. Yeah, yeah, and we have to make Rick and Morty fans. Um, <laughs> just doubling down on I that. I fucking really am. I'm just fucking... I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Hold on one sec. I'm just right. trying to find something here. So I got one, but I'm looking for number two. <laughs> looking for number two that's a clip <laughs> are you doing the police mustang driver said didn't stop no where's that one i will mark it as an announcement in the group right. robert ward posted that one that'll be our second one because i found one for the uh the stripper one. Oh yeah yeah that that one and then the whatever the police one actually is that robert ward, ward found he usually doesn't steer us wrong no no robert ward always gives us gives us <laughs> <laughs> robert ward always gives us the good stuff all right so you're good to go now yep, good to go if you say it's made by the Tubular Corporation, I'm going to hate it. <laughs> yeah, because they make everything from uh, being a heavy investor in monster energy drinks to owning the rights to all Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah. like the tubular corporation kick the fuck out of the world and this week and make it your bitch <laughs> whatever oh whatever care. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter i'm done however you want to fucking do it all right and i have stopped recording